Batter up. Today we are talking about the travel nursing team and who makes it up. How successful you are or how stressed often depends upon those who are around you. Hi, I'm John. I've been in the travel nurse game since 2018. I have traveled all over the United States with my family. Now, most of that has been in an RV. I've been all the way up to Alaska. I have been to Maine, California, Washington, Florida, and all the places in between. It is an amazing gig, and I'm glad and excited that you're here to check it out. All right, there are about four aspects of this team in our little metaphor here. The first one is you, basically the MVP. The second is the agency, who I like to think of as like the ref or the umpire. And then there's the recruiter, who's kind of like your teammates along this. And finally, there's the hospital, which I kind of think of as like the away game or another field somewhere else. It is totally the playing field. All right, let's talk about the main MVP here, and that's going to be you as the travel nurse. Obviously, you're going to need something that everybody needs to get into this gig, and that is the right type of licensure. You got to have the right equipment in order to play the game. We want to talk about, first and foremost, the complicated compact and single state shenanigans. <laughs> Basically, if you are currently assuming you are currently practicing as a nurse, and so you will likely have a single state license within the state in which you live in. But first, you need to learn a little bit of history about the NCSBN, or the National Council of State Boards of Nursing. It's a mouthful, but they have done a lot for our profession. And let's go back a little bit. So in 1970s, when all this got started, there were several different states that said, look, we need something to help regulate nursing as a profession so that you know the what a nurse means in Pennsylvania is the same thing as what a nurse means in Arizona. So they got together and they said, we want to establish a set of regulations that will work across borders. And eventually out of that came the NCLEX, which is obviously the standard boards that we all take after graduating nursing school in order to become a registered nurse. The 90s brought in the internet and really introduced all sorts of things for us in terms of communication. NCLEX went from paper to the computer and we saw the beginnings of the Nurse Compact or the NLC, the National Licensing Compact. And then there was the beginnings of what they called NURSYS, N-U-R-S-Y-S, -S, which is a database for all active licenses across the nation. The Millennium further built upon all of that, and that's where we saw public access to nurses, where all of us can now log on and verify licenses across states, or anybody else that wants to know that we're active can look on our license there based on name or numbers. Talk about something awesome. They got together and said, look, these nurses, if they want to travel or if they want to move around, should have the ability to practice. One you know, State Board of Nursing's regulatory compliance equals another now. If I'm a nurse in Kansas, I can also be a nurse in Colorado. <laughs> I keep saying California, but they suck and aren't still part of this yet. The nursing compact is what started it all, and that's what makes traveling such an awesome gig that it is now. The NLC, or the Nursing License Compact, basically gives us practice authority at any of the states that are within it. Now, right now, there are 40 jurisdictions in place, and we don't say states, because there are jurisdictions in places like Guam and the US Virgin Islands. If you wanna learn more and who's involved in it right now, all you need to do is literally go to nursecompact.com and there'll be a great map there where you can see everything, including states that have pending legislature to join the compact. You'll also see the few outliers that are not part of it yet right now in things like uh, California, Nevada, I believe, Washington actually has is, is got legislature pending, so does Alaska, so does Hawaii, uh, which have been some of the major holdouts. But there's still a few out there that are kind of yeah, thinking about it and on the fence, but hopefully we'll bring them into the fold at some point in time. All right, if you already live in a state and have been working as a nurse there and are thinking about this travel gig, you're going to want to apply for the multi-state license in the area that you live. So if you're in Arizona like me, you make sure you go onto the state's Board of Nursing website and and send in the application and pay the appropriate fees to change your license from a single state to a multi-state license. You can still totally practice in Arizona, you just also now can go practice in Kansas or any of the other states that are within the compact. There are a few differences for each state and what it means to apply and obtain that multi-state license, so make sure wherever you are, if you're part of the compact, 
go to your specific board of nursing website and look and see what needs to be done in order to obtain that type of license. For those of you that are outside of the compact, so maybe you are in a state like California that is not part of it and you want to begin to travel, you're going to have to do something that just is basically applying for nursing licenses in each state that you would like to travel to. I know this sounds intimidating and not easy and complicated and to be honest, it kind of is, but don't let that stop you. When we started out traveling, uh, Kansas was not part of the compact. That's where we were living at the time. That's where my single state license was at. It didn't stop us. All you have to do basically is go and apply in each state that you want to go to. So you try to get a contract or plan on where you're going, apply for the licensure in that state via endorsement. And what that means is that you're going to send in through the nurse sys verification system, a copy of your license to the state that you want to travel to. They will verify it along with the background check and usually some fingerprints and a couple other documents and things like that. They might want a copy of their, your diploma uh, and, and eventually they will issue you a, usually a temporary license you can get that's a lot faster. That's usually good for like eight to nine weeks or maybe a little shorter, maybe a little longer depending on where you wanna go. And then while that is in place, they will finish up the final applications to give you a uh, period of time for a single state license. It's anywhere from a year to three years, depending on the state that you're wanting to apply to. So that's how you would get into a non-compact state. Like if we wanted to go to, I don't know, California, then I would have to apply for a California license. Uh, and if I lived in California and wanted to travel anywhere else, I'd have to apply for every single state that I would want to go to. When we went to Alaska, we sat in the border of Montana, waiting to cross into Canada, waiting for one, the job to go through, and also for the license to finalize. All of the stuff was done. We were just waiting at the border to make sure we could cross first. And sure enough, it all went through and we had an amazing contract up there for the whole summer. It was awesome. Now that you've got everything that you need in hand just to show up and be able to play the game, now you're gonna have to start learning more about the other team members and the other players, if you will. The next thing I like to talk about is the agency. And in this analogy, I like to think of them as kind of like the umpire or the refs of the game. They are the regulatory compliance people. Now, the agency is not just that. They also make up recruiters and managers and a bunch of other things too, but in a whole, an agency is going to be responsible for finding the jobs out there. They are responsible for regulation and compliance. They know the rules, which is why I like to call them the umps, the refs of the game. They know what it's all about and how to play it. And a good one out there is gonna make sure that while you're out on the field, you're playing safe and you're playing smart. Basically, an agency in a nutshell is like a recruitment firm that connects nurses with temporary jobs. They do this by making sure that all of your compliance is correct, regulatory stuff is in order, and that the jobs and things will be matched to the skill set that you as the nurse can provide. The agency is initially where most travelers start looking at to find jobs. There are lots and lots of them out there. And you don't have to work with just one. You can work with multiples at the same time. Although there are some caveats and stuff that we'll talk about a little bit later in the series when we do a deeper dive into all of this. All right, the recruiter is next. And while you as the travel nurse here are the MVP, the recruiters are basically your teammates and should always be your best allies in this whole thing. The main recruiter's job is to work within the agency to help you as the travel nurse get paired up with contracts. They review and kind of help build your resume, verify credentials. They help match you to different jobs and stuff based on your skill set and qualification. They're also going to help coordinate all of the paperwork, and there's a lot. And most importantly, they act as a liaison between yourself, the agency, and the hospital. The recruiter should be your go-to person anytime that you've got an issue. The absolute best ones do this by making it fun and developing fantastic relationships with their nurses. And finally, there's the hospital, which I like to think of as the away game. The hospital is the last aspect. It basically represents the away field, right? Right? It's the same game, it's the same gig at just different locations. Just like I had mentioned in the last episode, you already know how to do this. It's just a different spot. The team doesn't change. The fields stay the same. There's still four bases, there's two end zones, there's two baskets, there's two goals, there's two nets, there's six hoops, two bludgers, one quaffle and a snitch. They're all the same. 
There's still doctors, there's patients, there's other nurses, there's still medications, code blues and browns. I'm having a blast making this series. Now, since we've just scratched the surface of the agency and the recruiter, please stick around because the next two weeks are gonna be devoted to deep diving into both of those two aspects. Next week, you're gonna see us talk more about the agency, what they really do, who's involved with them, how they do the things they do, and what to expect for some good ones and red flags to watch out for. The week following that is gonna be all about the recruiter. So stick around and I'll see you then.